Hi, I'm Anirudh. Let me start by telling you the story of a young kid. He has been dragged for a day of shopping by his mother, much against his wishes. He was hoping to be left alone in a bookshop to browse comics. But no, he finds himself in a sari shop instead. His mother picks up a sari and asks the shopkeeper, how much? I think you can all guess what happens next. For the next 10 minutes, this kid watches the exchange between his mother and the shopkeeper like a tennis match from hell. Outrage, recriminations, accusations of daylight robbery, earnest speeches about rising costs. Finally, a deal is reached. It is at a pretty heavy discount to the quoted price, but also significantly higher than the mother's opening offer. She grumblingly pays. And the moment she steps out of the shop, her mood instantly changes. Back to normal setting. The dance is over. The kid in the meantime is bewildered. His nerves are shot and he genuinely wonders whether the shopkeeper was robbed or his mother was called. Yes, I was that kid. And growing up, I hated the idea of negotiations. And I'm here to talk to you all today about how I learned to fall in love with negotiations all over again, and why technology is going to transform how we negotiate. I always thought of negotiations in terms of a conflict. Your loss was my gain, and my gain came at your expense. Turns out, I'm not alone. A lot of us feel this way. Most of us do not find negotiations fun and want to get it over with, my mother notwithstanding. The other notion we have around negotiations is that it is a super specialized activity that stuffy looking people do in big meeting rooms, the so-called experts. This is not true. Negotiation is not conflict. It is problem solving. And it is not a rare art form. We are all constantly negotiating. Are you picking a place to eat with your friends? You are negotiating. Are you having yet another conversation with your parents about how much screen time do you get on the weekends? You are negotiating. When I promise my wife that I'm going to clean my stack of magazines over the weekend, if she spares me some gnarly chore, I'm negotiating. Well, I'm not succeeding, but I'm trying to negotiate. What if we could all convert negotiations from the feeling of a death match or drudgery and treat it like a collaborative, creative process? What if we thought about it as a way to get to know the other person better? And what if we could use technology to learn from our negotiations and constantly improve? That is the mission my team and I are engaged in. We are building a company that takes over and manages end-to-end -end negotiations for our clients. We use artificial intelligence to understand buyers and sellers who deal with our clients and use this information to constantly make our solutions smarter and improve the lives of our clients and their partners. So, how do we do this? We have built our solution on three pillars to constantly ensure the best process and outcomes for the users of our product. And these can serve as useful ways for you to think about negotiations in everyday life. So, what are those three pillars? Bring all the key issues in a negotiation to the table. Be honest and create trust. Constantly learn and improve from every successful and unsuccessful negotiation. Bring all key issues to the table. What would you find it easier to do? To aim for a single point on a dartboard or to aim for a zone? The answer is obvious, right? To aim for the zone. That is what we recommend to our clients. Widen the zone of finding a common ground by identifying all the key issues to a negotiation and bringing it to the table. It makes it far easier to reach a win-win outcome. Now, let's say you were negotiating with your parents on how much screen time you should get on the weekends. Sounds familiar, right? Now, would you be just better off haggling 
for the exact number of hours or broaden the conversation to understand what are the outcomes you and your parents are hoping for. Maybe they want to spend more quality time with you or they want to make sure that you engage with the physical world around you in more meaningful ways. Ah, if that's the case, you may reach a more constructive solution by finding other ways to achieve those same goals rather than pinpoint the exact numbers of screen time. And you're likely to look for more creative solutions. For example, to make a commitment to have screen-free family meals every evening, or to make time each week to go out for a walk together or have a family board game night. The point is to identify and frame the relevant issues to all sides in the negotiation, and then solve for the best solution for all parties. You will always find a better solution compared to if you make the negotiation about one issue only. And you will almost always find that there are more than one issues at stake, even when you first thought there was just one point you were negotiating on. The second pillar, being honest and creating trust. Negotiations have an inherent dilemma of trust. How do you earn and build trust of the other person, especially when you have opposing interests? How do you build rapport and create empathy? Empathy is key here. You have to put yourself in the shoes of the other person, even if you don't agree with them, especially if you don't agree with them. Chris Voss, an ex-hostage negotiator for the FBI and negotiation guru, speaks to this topic beautifully in his book, Never Split the Difference. Even when he was negotiating in high-stress situations with hardened criminals and terrorists, he always saw the problem from their perspective. He framed the conversation with hostage takers in terms of them, not what he wanted. We conducted a fascinating piece of research to develop the thinking behind our solution. Overcoming trust issues is the key to success in negotiations. And one powerful way to do this is to improve the level of honesty. That is, how much do you share with the other person you're negotiating with? We solved this by proactively stating our priorities at the start of the negotiation. Basically, we said, hey, this is important to me from this negotiation. We then asked the human counterpart, what is important to you? Our solution then negotiated with the counterparty in a way that was consistent with their priorities and ours. The outcomes from the negotiations from this approach were far better compared to when we did not share information. Openness and consistent behavior are key to improving trust and negotiation outcomes. Three, constantly learning and improving from negotiations. This is the key reason why technology will play a growing role in helping us negotiate better. Every negotiation, successful or not, teaches us something about ourselves, about the other side, and about the situation. Remember, you are not trying to win at the cost of the other person. You are both trying to solve a problem together. Now, if the problem has clearly definable goals, and if you can tell a good outcome from a bad outcome, something that is possible with most negotiations, technology can be a great ally in helping us learn and improve because it can learn honestly, tirelessly, and endlessly. We analyze the data from each and every negotiation our tool conducts to learn which negotiation issue was important to which counterpart. Are there any patterns that we can see from this behavior? Which conversation flow is working better than another? The other big benefit of using technology is that it systematically removes human errors and bias. We are all wonderfully unique, thinking, feeling, and flawed individuals. And hence, we all carry conscious and unconscious biases. Remember the example I gave of my mom haggling with the shopkeeper? 
That is classic anchoring bias at play. I quote a very high or a very low price because we have a tendency to rely on an initial piece of information as an anchor and then reference the subsequent deal against that anchor. How to correct for that? By using technology, using data, and learning dispassionately from past negotiations. I want to end today by reminding you all once again that negotiations should not be inherently stressful. It is how we get along with everyone around us. And much as technology will aid that task, and automate it like we are doing, it is a very human process at the end of the day. It helps us step outside of ourselves and build empathy with others. The late Kofi Annan, Secretary General of the United Nations and Nobel Peace Prize winner, managed many delicate negotiations on the world stage. He had a paperweight on his desk with the slogan, diplomacy is the art of letting the other guy have it your way. Think about it the next time you are in a negotiation. Thank you.